Hello, welcome to this final video on the connection between the first derivative, the second derivative, and the function. What information can you get about the function from the second derivative? In this video, we look at the second derivative test. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. I'm, I'm happy to help you through this journey. Uh, hopefully, you find it helpful. Let's get started. What is the second derivative test, and why use it over the first derivative test? The purpose is to classify your critical numbers. Are they local mins? Are they local maxes? Uh, will they lead to local mins or local max values? Well, the second derivative test will do that same, serve that same purpose. You got to go find your critical numbers first. But if the second derivative is easy to take, not too much drama, not involving the quotient rule. <laughs> now, if the second derivative test is not too much trouble, then you don't want to check the signs on the first derivative. You can find things easier if you just go get the second derivative. And here's what you do with that, though. You're not checking signs on it. What you're doing with the second derivative is you're actually taking the critical number and you're plugging it into the second derivative. Okay? So you got a place where your second derivative is equal to zero at. Great. Then you go take... I mean, you got a place where your first derivative is equal to zero at. Then you go plug that value into your second derivative and you check the sign on it. Is it positive or is it negative? You don't care about the value, just the sign. Because we learned last video that when your derivative, is, your second derivative is positive, your function is concave up. So how could you have a zero tangent line and be concave up? That zero tangent line must be the, you know, a local minimum. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I said concave up. I'm sorry. Um, concave down. Uh, your second derivative is negative here. Sorry. Uh, second derivative negative, concave down like a frown. That zero tangent line must be a maximum. Locally, locally, local maximum. Okay, here's where your con second derivative is positive. So therefore, you concave up like a cup. Tangent line would be then a local minimum. All right, so it's about taking the second derivative and plugging the critical point into the second derivative. The issue, though, is that it requires your first derivative to be equal to zero. But it's possible for your first derivative to be undefined and still lead to a minimum or maximum. The second derivative test won't catch that. In both of those conditions, your second derivative, I mean, your first derivative is equal to zero. So there's no condition for the second derivative test about your first derivative not existing. Because that's the other way that you can get a critical number by your first derivative not existing. It doesn't catch that. Remember this picture here that we had earlier? It doesn't catch this action here. Okay, let's look at an example. x plus 4 over x. Drama at 0. Okay, let's take the derivative. So 1 minus 4 over x squared. That's the derivative. Okay, so where would that be equal to zero? Where one then would be equal to four over x squared, or x squared would be equal to four plus or minus two. Please don't forget the, the other value, the minus value. Yes, x is two, but no, x is also minus two. All right, you are not going to analyze any signs on this first derivative here. You're going to take these values and plug them into the second derivative. Second derivative isn't too much trouble to take here. If your first derivative is 1 minus 4x to the negative 2, then your second derivative is 8x to the negative 3. So let's plug these values into that. 8 over x cubed. If you plug a 2 in, the value is a 1, but we care about its sign. It's positive. It's concave up like a cup, local mint. Plug a negative 2 in, you'll get a negative 1 out. Concave down like a frown, local max. If you want the value, you got to go back to the function, not the derivative, not the second derivative. Got to go back to the function to get the actual value. So if the second derivative is easy to take, this should be your go-to, the second derivative test. Okay, here's a graph of this function. Okay. It has a, a property that I want to talk about in the next set of videos. This particular function has a property that 
we should discuss. It, it has an asymptote, not your standard vertical asymptote. Well, it does. At x equals zero, it has a vertical asymptote. Uh, we also talked about horizontal asymptotes. This one doesn't have one of those. This one has a third type of asymptote called a slant asymptote. Oblique would be the better word to use. All right, save that for another video. Let's end this video for now. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Comment down below. Let me know what else you want to see videos on. And I make these videos for my class, but they're for anybody. And so hopefully you like them. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.